care and feeding of werewolves. Episode 5, Sick as a Dragon. Hello, and welcome to Care and Feeding of Werewolves, a podcast addressing issues and current events in the paranormal community. I'm your host, Hazel Thornton. Today's listener asks, how do I get my werewolf to stop howling at night? The neighbors are starting to complain. I'm assuming we're talking children and adolescents because most werewolves grow out of it. The best practice is to ensure that your werewolf has plenty of room to run and plenty plenty of mental and social stimulation. If those needs are being met and there's still an issue, you know those whistles for dogs? Just be sure to not use one too close or else you risk hearing damage. Don't forget positive reinforcement when they stop annoying the neighbors. Ah, it's that time of year when you feel like dousing everything and everyone with disinfectant, like alcoholic holy water. Hopefully we've all learned something from our human and human adjacent counterparts when it comes to face masks and avoiding people. I'm being reminded that I'm supposed to say social distancing rather than avoiding people. Tomato, tomato. Either way, these practices combined with regular hand washing are crucial for prevention and to avoid spreading germ-based illnesses. Unfortunately, Our versions of the cold and flu aren't always so easily defeated, partly because they're not always just a virus or bacteria. Since I'm pretty much the closest thing we have to WebMD, which MD? I thought I'd give an overview of the more common illnesses and the best known treatments for them. Not all species are susceptible to them, so disregard anything that doesn't align with your unique anatomy. If any symptoms worsen or persist, use your best judgment when it comes to seeing a doctor. And when I say doctor, I mean any qualified paranormal practitioner. A human would take one look and think they've discovered a new disease and want to turn you into a pet project. That goes for pretty much everything here. When in doubt, go see a doctor. You'd think that would be common sense. Oh, and don't reach for antibiotics as your first solution. There are enough superbugs out there thanks to indiscriminate use of antibiotics. Can you imagine if there was a magical superbug out there? Great. Now I think I just gave myself a new nightmare. Oh. Bless you? Uh. Creeping crud is named for the gray-green fungus that (sighs) rapidly spreads through the sinuses and leaves a lingering taste in your mouth, rather like rancid fried chicken. It really does. Since it's extremely contagious, gatherings such as holidays, conventions, and the like are prime super spreader events. Symptoms typically appear one to two days after exposure, and although it typically resolves on its own without intervention, you'll generally feel exhausted and miserable for a few days. At least you'll have an excuse to avoid people and stay in bed all day drinking tea and napping, rather than getting suckered by your best friend into going to the mall. Oh, I'm never going to a mall again. See? That's what I said. (coughs) Anyone who's had crystal cough can tell you that it feels rather like you're coughing up razor blades. It's an upper respiratory cough to expel calcium and other minerals that are harmful to the virus. 
the minerals form shards that look remarkably like crystals, thus the name. Observations suggest that taking mineral supplements will help speed things along, but no studies have been conducted yet to prove the theory. <coughs> Your preferred painkillers will help manage the discomfort, which is doctor speak for this is gonna suck, but you'll live through it. Commercial and herbal cough suppressants won't work because they work on more mundane coughs, not crystals forming in your throat. Symptoms typically subside after two to three days that will feel more like a month. If it lasts for longer than that, or the cough drops down into your chest, then you should see your doctor. Ugh. Hey there, Tim. You sure look miserable. How did you get in here? You're covered in green crud and you reek to high heaven. Yes, I'm sick and highly contagious. You need to go. You're in luck. What? Introducing Magigon, a brand new magical malaise medicine. No more wondering what do I have? Creeping crud in a possessed lower intestine. Or even what medication should I take? Magigon has you covered. It relieves symptoms at the source, from screaming flu to possessed lower intestines. Magigon has what cells crave. Possible side effects include spontaneous levitation, organ regurgitation, anecdotal syphilis, third eye conjunctivitis, astral vertigo, temporal misplacement. Seek medical help if you experience existential crises in a solipsistic state. I'm going back to bed. Magigon has what cells crave. When I got Demon Drip as a kid, I was convinced Slimer from Ghostbusters was possessing my nose. The color and texture of the acidic mucus is very distinctive. Decongestants and cough drops are your friend when it comes to treating this bug until it passes in about a week. Avoid anything citrus or acidic until it passes because that's just adding acid on top of acid. Normally, I'd advise against performing chemistry experiments in or on any part of your body, but a baking soda <sighs> nasal rinse can bring relief. Just be prepared in case it really starts foaming and your roommate assumes that you have rabies oh. from hell and reaches <laughs> for the sword you keep by the front door for home security. <laughs> Then the neighbors call the cops and you have to come up with a plausible story for why you're covered in green bubbling slime, the apartment is wrecked, and your naked roommate is wielding a sword. Are, are you done? No. You done? Oh, I'm, dying. I'm dying. Good. Oh, I love you. <laughs> okay where's the alcohol <laughs> most people with scales are probably already familiar with dragon decay which is a fungus that likes to live under scales and in other dark nooks and crannies the scales will dull and discolor and in severe cases fall off outside molting season it appears on our list today because it tends to be more of a problem during the winter months than the other seasons. Most antifungal creams will work if you catch it right away. If not, then your best bet is to use a mixture of one scorpion skin, a splash of tea tree oil, three griffin feathers, <sighs> and a palmful of lemongrass. Clean the affected area and rinse with apple cider vinegar, then Take a brush and work the cream or mixture into the scales twice a day. Despite the name, gut rot is not caused by drinking cheap alcohol that your cousin spiked the mulled cider with. Imagine a stomach bug from hell that makes you smell like a rotting corpse. 
which is especially fun if you live in close quarters with anyone. A brew of moth wings, rosemary, crypt dust, and honey every day will help keep everyone, including yourself, from gagging and speed along recovery. After you've recovered, I recommend sterilizing the bathroom, fumigating the house, and possibly performing an exorcism. Phantom pneumonia happens when ghosts or spirits take up residence in the lungs, which is the coolest party trick, but will lead to pneumonia and other respiratory issues, especially if you're already sick or considered high risk. <laughs> Unlike the others on this list, it isn't contagious because it's more of a haunting than an illness. However, if you're host to any other entities, they may become jealous and territorial, forcing the ghost to move to someone else, which is easier if you're in close quarters with other people. Or if you smoke from a pipe that happens to be haunted, then the whole family can get infected at once. <laughs> It can be treated like any other hauntings, with just a few tweaks, like burning incense instead of using anointing oil. <clears throat> Thankfully, the screaming flu is only a 24-hour bug. For the sanity of everyone around you, use a silencing spell. Especially if you're of a species with sonic abilities, because it's transmitted via sound. Oh, man. You'll want to apply cold packs to your jaws and use dry mouth remedies. <laughs> Bless you. In between screaming bouts, massage your jaw and temples to help ease the stiffness. You'll be able to feel where you need it the most. Until next time, remember that people are gross and take the appropriate precautions to avoid getting sick or spreading illnesses. Stock up on orange juice, chicken soup, and if you're a fire breather, Kevlar handkerchiefs. <coughs> I'm now going to go take a nap because I'm freaking exhausted. I had to disinfect the entire place after closing time and I get to do it all over again tomorrow. Oh, my freaking head. Ditto. Do you have Technicolor mucus? Yes. Are you vomiting up pins and needles? Let us know on Twitter at CareWerewolves or email us at FeedingWerewolves at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Today's episode was written by Brenna Anderson Dow. Performed by Brenna Anderson Dowd and Frederick Elmore. Sound editing by Frederick Elmore. Music by Kevin Elmore. And special thanks to Deacon Anders. Find us on Facebook at Care and Feeding of Werewolves. Tweet us at Care Werewolves or email us at feedingwerewolves at gmail.com. Please rate and review. Care and Feeding of Werewolves is a podcast distributed by Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions and licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution share alike 4.0 International. All content on the Care and Feeding of Werewolves podcast is fictional and for entertainment purposes only. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of an episode. Reliance on any information provided by Care and Feeding of Werewolves, Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions, or anyone involved with this production of this podcast is solely at your own risk.